This is Startup Storefront. Eat your own dog food. It's a simple phrase designed to convey the notion that if your product is good enough for your consumers, it's good enough for you too. For Carlos Bryant, founder of Las Maris Vegan Food Truck, his initial menu didn't fit with his diet. Las Maris wasn't always vegan, and when customers would ask how the food tasted, all he could offer were referrals to other people. Let's just say it didn't exactly inspire confidence. But Carlos was quick to recognize the dissonance and soon made the switch to vegan offerings. The rebranded food truck was a much more authentic and personal venture, one that allowed him to combine his startup with his virtues. What followed could be considered a runaway Sacramento success story, but Carlos has plans for expansion far beyond a single food truck in a single metropolitan area. So listen in as we cover everything from the problems of scaling your business too quickly, how his rap career instilled in him the grit that he'd later use in entrepreneurship, and why life is like a game of Twister. Now, on to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Carlos from Las Maris yes, Vegan. Yes, Thank sir. you for coming on. People of don't course. know. What does your company do? What are you doing? What are you uh, working so, on? So what we have right now is a vegan food truck in Northern California area. Stockton, California, to be exact, we service the Sacramento and Modesto area. So that whole corridor there, like in the valley in between the Bay Area and like, uh, I guess, Bakersfield, Fresno, like in the middle right there, that valley, not, you know, San Fernando Valley, yeah, but the other yeah, valley. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing now and then hoping to expand, hopefully within the next nine months or so into a brick and mortar in the Bay Area or Sacramento area. And then we want to do like a ghost kitchen, not like Santa Monica area. So that's something we've been kind of scouting out. That's kind of why we're here today as well. We can help you do that. I think. Yeah, uh, you think so? That, yeah. yeah. That'd be amazing. That's so, what I do. I'm a developer. Oh, oh let's make it happen. So you can begin a lot of good press. I've seen it on your Instagram, yes, a lot yes. of news, local channels. Yes. It sounds like you have an amazing product. Yes. What made you want to start the whole thing? What was like the thing for you where you said, this is, looks interesting. And then, and then also, making the food you do, but vegan. What was, okay. look, walk me through sort of that okay. educational so process got you. for so, you. So the cool thing is this, it's actually crazy because when we started out, we weren't necessarily, we weren't a vegan truck. We were a typical, like regular, like- uh, Just a good food truck. Good food yeah. truck, yeah. you know, Pastor, Asada, everything like that. Okay. And so this is getting a little ahead of myself, but um, so basically I wa- I can't, I remember I came home one day, I was working at UPS part-time and I came home. Which is a good job. It's a good job. They it pay is, well. A lot of people don't know. UPS pays really well. Yeah. It's pay, it pays well. When I, when I left there, I was making six figures, but it wasn't, it, it was just 14, 15 hour days. I just couldn't do it. And I wasn't working. It's draining. It. Yeah. It's draining. You mess with your relationships, but that's a whole nother story. So anyways, I came home one day and I proposed it, man. I had been seeing food trucks around. I've been wanting to do something to like, I guess monetize my time that I was putting in somewhere else, like put it somewhere else and actually make a, a profit. And I knew that my fiance was a good cook. Uh, my business partner, Brett, his wife was also a good cook. And we kind of got them kind of infused and we came up with this concept. Um, and it started off as an original, like I said, like a Mexican food truck. And then, uh, you know, fast forward about a year after that, you know, we get into the general processes, the general functions. We're doing okay, but we're having a lot of like pitfalls, I would say, a lot of issues, you know, hiring issues, drama with the food truck breaking down. Cause you know, we, we're starting off, we don't have the finances to go buy a new truck. We're, you know, we're renting an older truck at the time. Things are breaking apart and, and I'm wondering why these things are happening. So then I, I, I was watching a podcast. I forget who it was, but they were, um, I know you, are you guys familiar with Pinky Cole, the, the slutty vegan out of Atlanta? No. So she's like, like super big vegan restaurant out of Atlanta. And she's like crazy. She's like killing it out there. You said slutty vegan? Yeah, slutty vegan. It's That's like, a- it's popping. It's like, it's yeah. like a big deal. So we got some free game. We watched the podcast. Um, I watched the podcast and it was saying that she was talking about her story about how she was vegan, but she owned a, a jerk chicken restaurant, right? So she was compromising her life. And at the time I was vegetarian and people are asking me about my taco truck food, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't even, you gotta talk to my fiance, but I don't really eat. And they're like, what? You know what I'm saying? And people are like, well, why don't you eat? You know, right, right. And I was like, well, you know, I've cut red meat for my diet. It's actually been better for my health. And they're like, well, so you're saying that you don't do it for health reasons, but you're selling it to people for profit? And that's something that kind of snapped. And that's something I picked up in that podcast as well. It was like, you gotta walk in your purpose. And it doesn't matter if you make, for me, not at this point, we've actually done better. But even if we did worse, I'd feel better about it, I think. Why do you think you did that? I see it all the time with entrepreneurs. It's like the one thing I noticed over and over and over and over again. It's like people are willing to leave their jobs, take the biggest risks to do the thing that they see with the world that needs fixing, but they're not willing to unapologetically do that. Like they're not, uh, they're not willing to 
be so in your face about it or like yeah. eat their own dog food yeah. is a you know a term they use in tech yeah and it's it's always like i really want to figure this out like i'm like why why would you take all the risks but not do what i view as like the easy part like for me with the podcast like yeah i'll tell you like i think we're the fucking best podcast in the world exactly and we have a yes, team you see it no, you have a studio yes. and we're doing all the things and we're really in your face about that yes but a lot of people, I'm just wondering, do you think it's something like you were just early in the journey? I think we were early in the journey. And you think about it, it is a compromising thing because I know entrepreneurs are both spectrums. Like you're saying, like, well, I know people that are franchisees of a McDonald's but won't eat at McDonald's. But then I know people, right, that, you know, right. I, seriously, I know yeah, a lot right. of guys, gym rats, and they like, I don't even, Yeah. but it's like, dang, they for, make money. for the money, it's yeah, like, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. And there's some people that like, they won't compromise their integrity. They're like, I will not do something that, I don't believe in because at the end of the day, with the rise of personal brands, anything you put your name on comes back to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if you're a pastor at a church, but you own a, a strip club on the side, it's like you can't. That's you not can't justify that. No, you can't justify that. Right. You're, you're living good. I but think you can. Stripper needs strippers. Needs Jesus. They need saving. <laughs> Stripper needs <laughs> no, Jesus. No, bro. but you know what I'm saying? Why are you no? judging the stripper? <laughs> no, but I'm saying you can't Monday through, Monday through Friday. You can't, no, right. you know, yeah. pre preach that that's not good or whatever. And then on the weekend, you're a different person. So. That's why, and I feel better, and I feel like I'm more adamant about doing things like this, this podcast. Like, if it was an all-meat truck, I probably wouldn't even be here with you guys because I know somebody would ask me, like, well, how's your food? Yeah. And I would either have to lie or be like, oh, I'm a vegan. And they're like, well, how does that work? Like, exactly, yeah. How do you know your you know, your food's actually still, you know, you don't go try your own, you know what I mean? So I feel like it works way better this way. But in that, in that, so at the beginning you started, and then at some point you're realizing, like, what your bangers are, right? Yes. So you're like, all right, people love, so you're getting, at least you're getting a lot yes, of good data exactly and so now you're like okay cool we got these things they smash yes now let's just make them let's see right yes and okay so then i really want to understand that so at some point you go okay let's start experimenting with different options and it's probably it probably didn't taste as good at the beginning or, um, or maybe it did like maybe you were surprised by the timing in the market what was that leap like from substituting meat i think there was so we did it right and in the beginning we didn't like we just made an Instagram post like, Hey, we're looking to change. We're going to change. Like it was spur of the moment. Okay. I think we were like close. So you for, you uh, told Instagram. Yeah. We told okay. Instagram and like social face, Facebook. We're like, Hey, we're going to be, we're made a transition. Like wrote like one of those long uh, note posts. Hey, made a transition. Yada, yada, yada. Vegan. A lot of people were mad in the comments. I was going to ask you. I'm sure you had a customer base. At yes. That point. We had a customer base and they were upset. But then at the same time, I think we, put together another 1,000 or 2,000 followers over that week of actual people that were fully plant-based, living that kind of lifestyle as well. So it was, a, it was a give and take. Some people were upset. Some people came to the truck unknowing that we went vegan, still ordered you know, a, a chicken burrito, not knowing it's a vegan chicken burrito, and they still liked the same. Um, you know what I mean? It was just... We, did it we, feel like a hidden camera show in a way exactly. that you were like, did you know that you're not eating exactly. actual chicken? I know. I've always wanted to do like one of those. Like, that's a good marketing idea. Like, yeah. just, you know, walk down the, you know, Venice Beach and just have people try it. Hey, like chicken burrito and just, that side note, my mind's always going. But yeah, so people were upset at first, but I feel like, man, it, it, it didn't bother me at all because of that reason. I felt like yeah, I was you're walking. you a hundred percent. And I yeah. see worse, like I see um, local news stations. Uh, PETA had posted us just this last week. I, I see these things starting to come from press. There's a Berkeley uh, vegan festival we're going to do in July in, in San Francisco. And then we're looking to do, hopefully, like, get into, like, a Rolling Loud or, like, a Coachella or, like, a, a Outside Land, some of the festivals, because that's a big yeah. place. And they're trying to really market towards having a, one or two vegan options. Yeah. Coachella killed it this year. They had, like, three vegan, like, vendors there, and their business has skyrocketed since. So I think that's a good a way to go as well, to test the market of wherever you want to go. It's scary though, man. But I think for me, I feel like I'm the poster child, right? So that's why I like take my health really seriously. I'm not the typical vegan, you know. I'm not super scrawny. I, you know, I got a little bit of size on me. So no, seriously. So people, when I tell them, I feel like they're more inclined to like actually believe. Like, oh wait, really? You're, I'm like, yeah. And then they kind of like, okay. I mean, I've met, I've met some overweight vegans. No, just because oh, you're I, vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. No, yeah, I met some overweight yeah, vegans. Yeah. I'm talking about like you know, to be, <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst too. I tell people if you you can't because people are gonna, shaming Nick. No, no, no. People are gonna so eat you mean. up, man. If you're an overweight yeah. health person or like I'm an overweight, right. if, you're, if you claim anything and you're overweight, people are like, come on, man. Like, yeah, I'm not trying to be the face of food if you're overweight it's it's hard to believe and then i you know you work with daring chicken daring, yes, daring foods ross yes ross is dope so that's that's another one and we've been like i think i've become a like a king of like just hacking man like i will like figure it out whether like in linkedin everybody watching this linkedin is the is the key to growing your business like you can find anybody on there any company you want to work with you want to work with daring and you want to get the inside inside 
you know what I mean? That's how you, you really work. Uh, Give us a story. What'd you do? So yeah. for, for PETA, reached out to their marketing team through there. And then that's how they found us. You know what I mean? Like they are, we're, they were following us. So you us go on like, LinkedIn, you LinkedIn, find the marketing person. And it's I, Courtney, and you, you whatever her name them. is. You yes. send them a DM. Yep. And I'm just like, hey, okay. my name is Carlos. I'm the owner of Las Marty's Vegan. I had a whole like spreadsheet. Hey, we've garnered this many followers. We've done this. We've done like all of our schematics. And I said, hey, we want to create content for you guys or whatever. And that's how it started. And I think so I you said, said you want to create content for them. That's what I said. Interesting. Interesting. Inter- so what was the out. content you were trying you were trying to so offer? like like recipes or things like anything like vegan based that they can share onto their platform for their followers because that was missing exactly because they're like more like all so animal you do based some research you're not sending these messages blindly no you need to research who you're talking to and what they need in their niche right so I send the message November of 2021 when I messaged her and it, it just happened like last week, like it finally came through. So like you got to like, and I, and I just would follow up like every month or so. Hey, how's it looking to die? And she, uh, her name's Brittany. She got it all through. And then she hooked me up to uh, Melanie, hooked me up to Melanie. And then she, uh, plugged us in, liked what we were doing. And then they actually like did a cover on us. Like actually did a video more than what we expected. We thought it was going to be something else. So they actually did a like, whole cover posted up as a collaboration post and we garnished a lot of followers from that Did they pay you or was it just like it was just straight clean okay. through okay. so and I, and I appreciate that a lot yeah i actually bought the the young lady a bottle of wine i sent it to her i was like thank you so much because that really changed the trajectory of our business right, right. like our caterings for like that day were like anybody in that area that followed that page was like hey man you guys do parties you guys do whatever yeah. and that's where you clean house too because it's like a guaranteed thing like a lot of parties uh, uh, weddings, things Brewery, like that. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. I, will. I know you guys got a lot going on. I've been watching your page <laughs> the last couple of days. This yeah, guy's everywhere. Stuff going on. Yeah. Let me know, man. I'm ready to go. I want to rewind a little bit yes. to when no, you, no. when you first, got... <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> when you first got the truck, you know, you're coming off of a UPS job. You said you were making six figures. Was this all bootstrap between you, your wife, your partner and his wife? And what was like the process of getting that first truck? You said it was breaking down a lot. Yeah. You know, are you still in that same truck today? Have you upgraded? Like, what's so, tell us the story okay. of that. So, yeah. So everything so far has been just because when we started, man, it's been what? You know, I'm 27. So, you know, we're like 24, you know, 23 or so. You know what I mean? Like when we were getting the ideas together and, you know, we spent the whole year just saving up a couple thousand between all of us to like throw into a pot because we didn't understand the concept of like, you know, leveraging your credit, like uh, financing, things of that nature. And we're barely, honestly, business credit takes a while to build anyways. Like we've barely got decent business credit to actually now we can finance on behalf of the business and not have the personal guarantee. It takes a while though, seriously, because the banks don't play. They, they You gotta be like legit. So uh, for in the beginning, it was like uh, all just cash we saved up from working our jobs. My partner, he's a manager over, he's still working at Amazon. He's a high level manager over there. So it was like Amazon, UPS, kind of weird my best friend, and uh, he was saving some money, I was saving some money, we put it together, started renting out a truck to leverage it, you know what I mean, thought it would be a good write-off, you know what I mean, but it was an older truck from another gentleman, and it was just not it. But that taught me the business. I feel like, and, it, and I think getting into business when you're not 100% um, certain on what the terms of the business are, uh, without a maximum amount of financing, I think it makes you appreciate the business more and learn the business. Instead of getting into something, $100,000 into something immediately, and not being able to either perform or not liking what you're doing. And then you get into this kind of weird space where you're trying to sell your business. Or, So I think we learned the, the, the best way. We bumped our heads early on. And now we're in a position to where we built a relationship with our banks locally, a community bank, the Bank of Stockton in Stockton. And now we're able to be like, okay, we want to, you know, do we want to do this? We want to leverage this or we want to secure this or, you know. How many trucks do you guys have now? So we just have the one. Okay. We tried to do two. We tried to do two. We had that messed up truck with another truck. And we we're like, we're just going to make it happen. But we tried to grow too fast. And then we, we, were getting some, we were getting some bad reviews because we weren't, the systems weren't in place. And that's what I've learned like this last year of 2022 is like the standard operating procedure. Just like if I make sauces or if I have a, a manager or a supervisor on a truck doing things a certain way, it has to be all detailed and documented. So when I open another truck, it's easy to transition. If not, there's going to be a different, everybody knows like a, you know, a chain or like a Chick-fil-A or like a Chipotle you go to and one on one side of the street tastes different than the one on the other side of the street because it just doesn't translate. Something's not right there. And I, I don't ever want that to happen. I think that's when food businesses do fall apart when they try to scale. I'm also curious about, so this, this food truck out here, this coffee truck, yes. you know, f- for the, for them during the pandemic, they all of a sudden lost their crowds, which meant that they lost their business. And I can imagine for just about every food truck everywhere, that was also the case. I mean, so like, what was that like for you guys and that loss of revenue all of a sudden, like, how did you pivot to get through that? 
So, you know what? There was a time, I think there was like a month and a half where we were just closed for a while. Like we just had to like, you know, I just had to pay everybody whatever's on payroll, you know, tell people what was going on. Some people left, never came back. And I understood it because they got to, you got to make their money. But I just gave people, you know, a heads up and we had to shut down. The cool thing was, though, it was uh, my fiance and my uh, my partner's wife that were the main people working. So, and you know, what I mean, so we were kind of financing like they were on payroll, but the, you know, you sure. know, you know, you know, yeah. how it yeah. goes, right. Yeah. Yeah. They were kind of like, honestly, like we're working for free. Yeah, yeah. Basically, because we're financing it through our personal checks. He's Amazon UPS. We're putting that money in. They're getting paid from there, but it's just the money we're putting into exactly. the business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's coming back to the account. Right. That was the cool part that we, you know, there was two other young ladies that ended up one came back. And then one ended up going somewhere like to work at like a work Tesla or somewhere because, you know, and I understand. I mean, I, I don't ever want to hold anybody back from life, but I think it's just like it, the resilience you have to have, the grit and tenacity. I, I think, man, I feel like nothing can stop me. And I feel like we're not even where we need to be, but I don't think anything can stop me because I feel like I'm just that creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I'll do whatever it takes. Like, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll work the thing by myself 120 hours a week if I had to like yeah. some crazy number. I'll make it happen. Cause I, it's just my baby. I think you guys. I think you guys talked about that before. Business is like a baby. A little bit. I mean, I think there's a part of probably where you're gonna about to go is like. So at UPS, you learn that you learn how all the procedures matter, yes. right? And yes. so like every location yeah. does yep. this thing the same level, level, yep. and so you start to understand that. And so then, like the way I think about entrepreneurship journey is at the beginning you start off as a visionary, but you don't know where you're going, and yes. so you're also just like map making as yes. you go. Hundred percent. Then it shifts to okay, cool. And now I have a team. Now there's like eight of us. Yes. And now your skill set has to shift to visionary plus system maker, system yes. creator. Yes. Or you hire someone that's really good at that, like a COO. And then, but the vision has to grow. And so instead of one trucks, it's got to go to ten. It's got to go to five locations. Yes. It's got to go, you know, seasonality, kind of what you're touching on in terms of food partnerships and so now you grow in a, in a completely different way but i think as you grow you become more of an artist yes. I, re- I actually really believe that i believe you become less of a businessman more of an artist it sounds crazy i think no you're at right. the beginning you got to be sharp in business right because it's like you don't have that much money yeah man. and so you have to write about money and yeah. so it's like you're playing monopoly and yeah. the only the only game there is dollars it's not opening stores it's dollars it's like because you don't have any it's right. all crazy, man. And so then it changes. What's the roadmap look like for you? What are you trying to do? Yeah, yeah. And I know I skimmed through a bunch of this stuff earlier, so forgive me. No, I'm just excited good. to be here with you guys. Like, yeah. man, the whole ride here, a five-hour drive, I'm like, man, I can't wait to sit down with you guys. <laughs> so, um, and you can ask us stuff, too, no, as, as, as we jump yeah. into this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to pick you guys' brain a little bit, too, because and, I, and I'd also like some, in, in, some insight from you guys, you know, because we want to, you know, like I said, by before February, March of next year, we want to have, like, you know, hopefully have the truck still, or just see how see how it goes, you know, but keep a truck because it just makes sense for the cater. It's just the easiest, convenient thing. We were, you know, there was one point we were just like had like how a U-Haul with freaking tables and a grill in the back. And that was horrible, man. Take lifting off there with five guys. You know what I mean? Like, so the truck's convenient. You know, you just pull up, totally. do a wedding in the, you know, people's backyard, leave. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or winery, whatever they want. So uh, for us, like I said, I want I want to do the ghost kitchen thing. Where do you want to do that? So there was a place in Santa Monica that they I had been talking to the gentleman, but he never sent me over the 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 specs of like what they were doing and like the pricing and everything. Uh, it was um I forget what it's called, Main Chick and all these different places. I don't know if you guys ever heard of these places. Yeah, there's a bunch of ghost kitchens around. I mean, there's they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one I talked to. I forget I forget what it's called. Uh, Colony, okay. Colony. So I talked to them, um, and that was something we talked about last month, and uh, we were trying to get that done by like July, August. But I just got to see the parameters of it. And see, because it would it would probably tell me coming down here for just a little bit, at least. You know what I mean? So I had to make sure my life's in check right now. So there are some personal things that happened where I had to kind of stay home a little bit, you know, family, you know. But uh, I'm looking to get out here. I, that was the, one of the main goals is to move out here and then start something like that. Yeah. And then my partner, he's, he wants, he's adamant about staying up there. So we're thinking about doing a, a restaurant in Sacramento. It's, it's way cheaper to start. And that community is booming with Sac State, the college right there. The vegan, it's, it's pop. Like downtown Sacramento starting to look like, like LA, yeah, it is. It's it's popping, and but it's less populated. You know, what I mean, it doesn't take right, you, you know, right. fourteen minutes to go a mile. You know, also they take all the lessons learned of LA and they bring them to Sacramento. They're like, oh, LA did that wrong. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sacramento is looking beautiful. Like even like the areas that you couldn't go in ten years ago without you know getting robbed are like looking amazing right now. Yeah, it's crazy. 
I've seen the area around the new arena, the stadium. Oh there. man, the, that's the, amazing! The, was it the basketball arena? Yeah, the golden the, one. Yeah, yeah. The it, Kings it, are playing. It's incredible. Like they've completely revitalized. And and we just had Leisure Town on the show. They're okay. they're from Sac, uh, West Sacramento. Sacramento. West Sacramento. He's actually oh, running. Uh, Doug is for running mayor. for mayor of West Sacramento. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Part of it's a publicity stunt. Part of it's for real. But yeah. that's pretty dope, actually. No, it's, to, it actually is pretty cool. Yeah. I like the commitment. It goes back to like the unapologetic commitment to making change. That's at dope. every level. At every level. So oh, he has man. a CP, he has a CPG product, and now he's trying to do that. So your ghost kitchen would it be like so Uber? You're basically Uber Eats that Grubhub. U- Uber Eats that would but, be the model. But also have a I think a outs, the outside seating area does really well as well. I know Colony has that where it's like an outside. That's why it was lucrative because it's like DoorDash Uber cool. But, you know, in our neck of the woods, you know, that's not my favorite thing. You know, I'd rather walk in the close proximity or just go get food. But I know it's different here, you know, and I got to learn that people, you know, some people don't even have cars in LA. They just walk or they Uber everywhere. I, I didn't know Certain that. Certain areas. Well, it's, di- it's yeah. different. Some people, they don't. They, you know, they just, you know, they might bike everywhere. Or mm-hmm. That's how San Francisco is. People don't have cars. Not everybody has a car. Right. And then in Stockton, you know, about an hour and a half from San Francisco, everybody, you know, if you don't have a car, it's like... You it's a smaller town. Yeah, it's like, why do you not have a car? It's kind of... You like a, I would say LA is more like that than yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. Like people don't walk here and they don't bike here. There's not the, there's not the public transportation infrastructure and there's not the density that San Francisco has just mm. by virtue of being that peninsula. So close, yeah. Like when I lived 100%. in San Francisco, I didn't have a car. I just rode my bike to the office and back. When he and first moved U- to LA, I was driving him around everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, just, I was Ubering around when I first moved here too. And it was like $200 a day because LA is massive. Oh man. So it would be like you living in San Francisco and Ubering to Berkeley, oh. Ubering to Oakland, oh. Ubering to, you know, somewhere in the mission that's a that's far yeah, i know yeah. right you and, it's, of, yeah, and it yeah. happens quick and so that's that's a problem with la la is like that yeah. and most of it's highway to get to these places just 100%. like just like berkeley okay Oka. so maybe i'm wrong with that so, so I, I got more research to do it just yeah. depends like if you if you're in like a coastal city like santa monica or venice yeah. you will get some people who just bike everywhere or walk everywhere yeah. but they don't leave but they don't leave they don't come to that's, west hollywood yeah, yeah, yeah that's they the don't issue. go downtown Ooh. and if they do it's like a trip it's like Oh, okay. I got, let me make like, sure. What are you my, doing today? Let me make oh, sure my, my family's is, okay for yeah. the next six hours. <laughs> well, so you know what? That's and that's a question I have for you guys. LA's so confusing with that. Like these small, like it's like some New York type boroughs type. Like they're can, not really cities. It can, can be. It's it can not be really like, cities, are they? Like no, like West Hollywood. Some are right incorporated, now. but but yeah. So like West Hollywood right now. This this is probably where you find a lot of people from the from like New York or Massachusetts or Boston. And so why do they do that? They do that because everywhere people there like to walk. And so everyone, at least for like for us and a lot of people from the East Coast, moved to West Hollywood first. Wow. Because they can walk places. Yes. So then you start exploring L.A. So now you're here you're in West Hollywood, very walkable, cool, cool community, young, hip, blah. But then you're like, oh, I want to go to like a Laker game or I want to go downtown for something. And you realize that's like eight miles, but it's 40 minutes. And in an Uber, that sucks. And the There's whole no COVID metro. thing with masks, like people hate it or love it. It gets a little eh. Metro, zero. Zero public transportation right now. That's changing a little bit with the Olympics. And so then you find pockets. And I'm like, I live in the Hollywood Hills. And so it's like, it doesn't feel like you're in a city at all. Like, it feels like you're kind of hidden from everything. But Ubers to my house and back are a pain. They're a pain. It takes way too long. And they're expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. Whereas in San Francisco, like, if I didn't want to bike, for whatever reason in my office, it's a $3. It was like three to six bucks. Oh, wow. Uber ride. It was quick. And they show up, like, in seconds, you know? Whereas, like, if you're in the hills... Yeah. The driver's coming from density, going all the way, way up, up there. there. 20 minutes later, you're coming minutes. back down. Yeah. It's annoying. You're not it's getting up. there till the hour later. Yeah. yeah. And so you lose time. And so that's why everyone ends up having a car. And then, like, there's areas to explore, like Pasadena. There's just, it's just like, you really just need a car in Los it's, Angeles. It's crazy, though, because, like, it's, I saw like all these cities. So, what is Los Angeles then? You what know, is it? What is it? What, what is that classified? It's yeah, not, it's a good question. You know what I mean? Los Angeles is not a city. It's like a. As a real estate developer, like, the way I look at it, I, I look at it as, like, it's whatever I want it to be. And that's like by fresh take, per, yeah. like personally. At the same time, it's also like the most collaborative place I've ever been. Yeah. And so like for business, like for you, like if you have a food truck, every brewery in the world is going to be happy to have you. And it's like, it's just a DM. Like it's not, it's not even sales. It's just like, it's just hey, let I know. Have, here's, this is what I do. This is my product. They're going to be like, cool. When can you show up? Yeah. And it's like quick, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then what you find out is if the brewery hits, like if they crush every night, then you're, ma- you're making money. And that's it. And you'll find that out quick. Like you'll just do a bunch of trial runs. You'll be like, oh, I got my spots. You sell out, you know, and then you're good. And then you have like a little route. Now you have like, a, now you have stops. I know. I got stops. Got two trucks at two But it's like, breweries. it's that easy. Like it's yeah. like, it's that lightweight. 
if, if the product is good. Sounds like it's amazing. Yes. And then also it's like in LA, and this is kind of the interesting thing I like about your business. So you have a food, yes. but within your food, you're using like daring yes who has their own massive following yes and they're reposting and like exactly shit, yeah, and then know. you got pita and then you got probably other ingredients yeah and so the whole thing about being like in the vegan space is like let's say you work with kite hill or let's say you work with daring yeah. it's like all of a sudden you have three legit brands that are willing to be like hey go try our yeah. blah and at from, this yeah. brewery yep. today and because they're all here it hits yes 100%. the vegans here cr- you know what i'm know, saying it's crazy it's and hardcore. so it's, and so like that to me makes your lift it's not like you're climbing a mountain like it's really just like a molehill like yes it's not that hard yes 100 percent. which to it. me i just go go fucking scale this like go get like two three trucks tomorrow and shit right. because hey, fine, because the money's like, there here here like credit card like the money you know what i'm saying like 100%. it's not a it's not a you've done the hard part the hard part is the product yes that's the hard part 100 percent. i right? like this guy but right you now. have the part <laughs> i mean because you have it i you're, like it you've done it 100 percent. you've done the hard part man and it's true to you I love it. And man. LA is so much better than they eat. <laughs> yeah. No, no, L, no. <laughs> NorCal. No, well, yeah. Well, I know for this type of business. Maybe not Sacramento. I've never been there. But Sacramento least- and, well, I know San Francisco for this type of business. There's a guy, Vegan Mob. That guy's killing it, man. That guy is killing it. He's vegan gonna Mob? Open, vegan Mob, dude. And okay. he does like uh, smoked brisket, like soul food, like all vegan. It's crazy. Man. But he kills it. And he's uh, he's looking up. He did a, um, a We Funder. He did crowd uh, crowdfunding. Like I think he did like seven hundred thousand on there, and he's gonna use that to open up his LA location. So that's another thing too. Like if you do that here, it's really easy for you to get endorsement of a celebrity, in the sense of like this is where they are. Yeah. And so if they happen to be where you are that one day, and they like you, they're gonna be like, hey, can we partner? One hundred percent. And if you look like them, then it's like even more of a part. It's easy. You see what I'm saying? So that's a real thing that can only happen in LA. That's real deal. Yeah. That's real deal. That that's why happen. I tell everyone, like, they just moved here from LA, Owen and Lexi. I've seen that. Congratulations. Yeah. So we got the squad here, and it's just like, this is where it all happens. This is where, like, the, the collaboration really, it takes off. 100%. It's an you'll, economy built on collaboration. You'll, you'll be here and be, like, in Starbucks with, like, Dr. Dre or something. Like, it'll just be, yeah. it's just different. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. different than anything. That's what people tell me all the time. It's just a different world. You, this is a funny story. Yesterday, or, like, maybe last week, I mean, I'm, like, taking the trash out. Guy comes down, and he's he's a he's a rapper. He's 17 years old, and he puts his window down. And he's like, "Hey man, you know where the rappers live around here?" And I just start laughing, right? And he's like, "No, dude, for real. Like, I'm 17. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. This is my Instagram. I just want to meet a rapper right here. I want to go to their house, knock on their door, damn, and like freestyle to them. That's so dope." And I was like, "One, I love this. I'm like, I love everything about this. I love that you're driving around the neighborhood thinking like this is the way." I was like, the reality is, yeah, they live in this area. Like, I know two of them that live in this area. Yeah. They're not going to be home. And if they are home, they got security. And there's no way yeah, you're getting in front of them. Yeah. Like, it's just not happening. Yeah. I'm like, so your best bet is probably to DM them. DM and he's them. like, what other neighborhood? And so I was like, Beverly Hills, Bel Air. I'm like, but it's all gated. But yeah, you're going to be. And he's like, where does Drake live? I'm like, Hidden hedge. Hills is gated. <laughs> I'm like, it's all gated. I'm like, Kanye's over there. I'm like, but you couldn't, you'll never get yeah, close. You might get hurt over there with security. But I just loved that he, that he flew here to drive around, shoot some cool, like he obviously shot a couple of music videos while he was out here. That's dope. But I just loved that. You see what I'm saying? That's dope. Like he was touching on something that I was like, that's it. Dude. Even, even I like, just, I just, it just vibes with me. I'm like, yes, that's the energy. Man, even the con, like, even if you had content of him trying to do that, would totally. you go, like, it yeah. might go viral. I wanted to do, I wanted to start shoot, filming him, him with this yeah, crazy yeah. idea. Yeah, it actually reminds me of the little Dicky video about, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, what was it, uh, Save That Money? or Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And he's that, going that around whole video people. was so brilliant because you were there following that, that hustle. How they put it together, And yeah. you saw, okay, it's a crazy idea at first, but he pulled it off. You're a rapper too? Yes, sir. Yeah. What made you want to do that? Rap um, visionary, rap, according uh, to your oh, Instagram. Man, you, you, you got you to gotta kind of hit him with the punk. You know, you got to yeah. let him know. So uh, actually, it's it's kind of a, not a dark story, but, you know, my father passed away. I was about 11, 12 years old. Sorry. And that, oh, yeah, it's all good. That was my transition. Um, I think I got into poetry, got into music, and um, that really helped me a lot. I think keep my head straight. It helped me develop. Because kids were going to, like, parties and stuff, and I would be in the studio. I'd be working. And I think that's what started the passion and the tenacity to like even with business right um because people my age right now what did it teach you what it teach me yeah dedication uh that you're gonna get disappointed a lot that you can't expect anything kind of like the gary v mantra where it's like 
you're going to do something for maybe 10 years and not see anything of, you know, and don't expect anything from it. And that's changed my business mindset too, to where like, I don't expect anything. When I post something on Instagram or whatever, I don't expect a certain amount of likes. I don't expect if I message Darian, I don't expect him to message me back. Like, cause when you do live in that realm, I feel like you get disappointed and that's when people quit because you live in that realm of always expecting things to happen. You're like, Oh, well, it's going to happen. I, you know, we just dropped the best product. We're going to sell out. And you don't sell out that day. And you take a couple punches like that. <laughs> it's people, the worst feeling. No, but I have a lot of friends that just no, for sure. they give up. They can't. You got to. Yeah, you get knocked on your ass a lot. But the thing is, is like I think Nipsey said it. He said, never let a hard time humble us. It's like you like still be that guy with that confidence. Even when you get your ass beat down. You know what I mean? Still, but some people aren't, you know right. what I mean? You don't have to always tuck your tail. You still can be like, you know, you zero. still have to believe at the of end course. of the day that you're the right person for this, that you're going to make it happen. hundred percent. Zero dollars in the bank account, whatever, whether you have a million dollars or zero dollars, you got to have that same energy. Yeah. And that's what I've always told people. I'll walk in the room, whether my business is down 20 K or we're up, you know, 80 K I'm going to be, you're not going to be able to tell. And especially when you have staff under you, right? My, my employees don't need to know that we're, we're not doing as good as we should be because th- th- that the uncertainty passed to them and they're like, oh, I don't want to be here. Like, I'm going to start looking for another job. So you got to have that kind of, you know what I'm saying? Some people totally. can't do it. I have friends that are like. I love it. So the problem, I, I've gone so far deep down that rabbit hole where for me it's like uh, the less money I have in my account, the harder I work. And so I just Ooh. hack it. If I have money in my account, I start making investments in startups. I start getting that thing to zero. Because once it's zero. You're back to that grind mode. <laughs> love it you be grinding man i'll be watching you i just love it you can manufacture a loss yeah. you see what i'm saying yeah. and so if you make all this money spend it all do the next building invest all of it and now you have like barely enough to pay rent no one can pull off the magic tricks that i can pull off when that's in my account and i just love that shit but it's also a problem right because it's like but do i really need to do that to myself again yeah, all the time yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? people look at you crazy like come on man why are you putting yourself through the struggle yeah but I, but it's fun it's like i don't know no, it's amazing. To that man. point. No, it's amazing. I, I love your guys' mindset 100%. It's, it's like, and that's super refreshing because where I come from, not a lot of people have that mindset, man. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to influence people. Like, all my friends. Where fr- do you come from? I come from Stockton, uh, the south side of Stockton. Not the, not the best place in the world. You know what I mean? But uh, you, know, you know what's crazy? I've gotten, you know, this is a sidebar. I've gotten to a point where I think I have a very good upbringing story. I think, I've, and like most people in this room, we've all been through a bunch of stuff. And I've gotten, I've like, hack myself where I don't even talk about it anymore because I don't ever want to be like that victim mentality. You know what I mean? Like I, I know it's there and that's my driver, yeah. but like I go up against these, my wealthy friends that haven't had those same things. And I don't, I just look at them like, I don't, I don't think like that. Some people are like, well, you know, I, I've had it rough, so I won't be able to accomplish. I'm like, nah, like, nah, let's go. Let's I'm, I'm ready. I'm down for it. And I think that's, it's, <laughs> it's also kind of negative though. You know what I mean? Cause I've kind of like blocked out my past, like to like, not even be consumed with it of like why I'm not where I need to be. Oh, well, my parents weren't these people or, you know what I'm saying? Some people are like that. I go the other way. I go. Uh, so like we were like members of a really fancy tennis club. Right. So we oh, join man. and I have, I have this every time we do something pretty epic and I'll tell my wife, I'm like, if people knew what I had to do to get in this place. So I felt like that the first time I was in an Equinox sauna. Oh, so man. that's like not even high level. That's like Equinox sauna. And oh, I was wow. like, if people knew what I had to do and where I came from, and then that turned into like the podcast that turns into tennis club. Yeah. I was at a gala last weekend and I was the guy putting the number up to buy some shit yeah. and I won. People were looking at you like, and I was like, people had any <laughs> idea. <laughs> I literally, I turned around, I was like, people have any idea what I had to do it's to like win this deep, dark these secret diamonds that you're earrings for my wife in this gala. <laughs> they would, they would be fucking shocked. Yeah, I know. But I lo- like, so I, j- I just use my story and I like, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's I, that's it's, your energy? It's the energy of like, that's what's up. Let's go do more of that. Like, let's go, because there's levels to it, right? Yeah. So let's just keep doing some crazy shit. When I was running with my buddy Xavier the other day, we ran 10 miles. We're training, and he was just like, I was like, I think mile nine, I hit like a little bit of a wall. And he was like, man, you said, you said you're Carlos Bryan, man. You've been through so much shit. He said, what's three more miles? Yeah. Or whatever. Right, you know what right, I mean? I was like, right. I'm like oh, for sure. And it's like, <laughs> but sometimes you got to remind yourself like, yeah. And I love, I, I love all these motivational speakers. You know, I try not to, don't buy into motivational speakers too much. Some people like are all about the like sayings, but don't ever put the action. Like you got to yeah, kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. but I like, I like, I like, <laughs> there's I, a lot of that. Yeah. There's a lot of people who re, like they they repost, regurgitate the info and they don't follow uh, like, it. What are you doing? I'm like nothing. Nothing. Like but uh, I think uh, I, I like, <laughs> I like Goggins a lot. David Goggins. Yeah. He, he yeah. talks about like that cookie jar. It's like when you're like, when you want to quit, just remind yourself, like, man, I grew up single mother household. We didn't have lights. We didn't have, you know what I mean? Like all these things that you went through, just pull from it. Cause it's like what we're going through now. Yeah. It's an inconvenience, but it's probably not as bad as some things you've seen back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Like for real, for real. So it's funny that you mentioned David Goggins because I was going to equate this to the SEAL mentality, where they always talk about that your mind will quit far before your body, and it's about training your mind to ignore whatever's whatever's telling you to quit, whatever's telling you to stop. You push past that point, and it's like this revelation. It, it's this wave that washes over you. That it's like, oh, if that was possible, what else is possible? What else can I do? You know, because my body's not going to give out. My mind is. Here's a funny story. So there's an apartment back here, and we're renovating it right now for my mom. So my, I'm moving my mom. No, this is a good story. So my mom's well, moving here from like Massachusetts. Bill Gates right here, man. Well, well, not. <laughs> far from that. But my mom's moving here from Massachusetts, and so I was okay. like, oh, we're just going to we're gonna re- redo the apartment, you know? Okay. So I bring her back there, and I'm thinking, like, this is it for a mother. This is it. Like, this is the moment, like, your son has taken care of I you. I know. Right? That's dope. That's in my head. See? You're with me. That's dope. That's dope. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's sure. what happens. So here's what happens. Single parent also. So here's what happens. She walks in, and she goes, she's getting emotional. And I'm like, that's what's up. That's the right reaction. Then she goes, you're going to change that light fixture, right? You're going to change that. She hit you with a... And I was like... Oh. And a part of me was so mad. And then a part of me was like, that's okay. what it's like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I love the fact that she demanded it. She's like, you need to fix this. Yes. This, is, this isn't me. Yes. Yeah. And I love that. 100%. And I was like, that's what's up. And that's, that's another reminder of like, even when you think that fucking journey's over, it's never over. Never. It's I, never I over. Just, I just told my buddy Adam, uh, he's a contractor in, in North California, and... um we're, we're talking about, I feel like life is like playing Twister. You know what I mean? It's like when you think you got every, like your hands here, you're good. And you look back and your legs, like not where it's supposed to be. Like you always are trying to like, yeah, yeah. with with everything, your relationships, like with, with business, relationships, family, personal health. Like I, I feel like I'm always like, you know, 80% everywhere or 90%. And then maybe I'll be like 70 over here and I got shit. It's like. But you got to figure out how to ride that wave because life, it does that to you. Sometimes you got to be more family oriented. Sometimes your relationship needs you. Sometimes you got to be more in your business for a couple of weeks or something. You know what I mean? So it's, cr- it's, it's crazy. I love it though, too. I love not, not living the same day every day. I feel like there's always a new task. You know what I mean? Instead of like the nine, that's what I used to hate about the UPS grind. It was like, it was an easy job pretty much, but it was just so time consuming and it was the same thing. You know, yeah, you're always buy doing your the time. same thing. They're oh, buying yeah. your time. It's crazy. They're and, stealing your goals. And what killed me is this. I would talk to guys that are my age, you know, mid twenties. And they're like, yeah, this is it. They're like, this is it. He's like, yeah, I got a good job. I'm making a hundred thousand a year. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, I'm just going to retire here, man. We got a pension coming in. I'm like, I'm like, I said, but you don't even like, he said, yeah, I don't like the job, but man, just 30 more years. And I'm like, just 30 more years. I'm like, 30? It's a big part of me track. dies inside every time I hear something like that. Well, you, man, you, yeah. those guys were like, and I had to, it got so toxic because you start putting your ideas out there in the world around people like that. Yeah. And they, they don't get it. And some of them really, they, they just, they really do not get it. Like, they're not even trying to hate on you. They just don't believe that's the right way to live. They're like, bro, this is safe, bro. Like, you, hey, your 401k, man, you can just max it out. They matched uh, 3%. Why don't you just, I'm like, dude, like, you know, I'm not digging on anybody. There has to be work. You can, work you can dig on them. No, but they're to quit their job. No, I, I can't tell them. Call them out by name. <laughs> Dylan, quit your job. <laughs> no, no, no. Marcus, no. quit your job. No, those guys tell are, them. nah, they got like, they got like <laughs> kids. They're not quitting. They're not doing anything. They can quit with kids. They don't want to. Those guys don't want to. These are, it's just an example for these guys. So I'm not close friends with them or anything, but yeah. with these guys, uh, it's we'll send like. send to the UPS Stockton. Yeah. I know, right? They're going to be like, man, we gotta, <laughs> they're going to start rioting off we're this. Gonna, we're going to send them a package. Press play. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it, it's just, I don't know, understand how people's mind is like that. And I feel like I go deep, right? So I look at like, okay, let's look at like the family tree, right? I look at my family generations before, right? They did not like my grandma, great grandma. Like if we go backpack, right? They did not have the opportunities that I have today. No matter how shitty my upbringing may have been, I'm pretty sure my grandmother, my great grandma, seen some shit, shit. You know what I'm saying? To where it's like they didn't have the opportunity to, you know, take off on a a, a Wednesday at noon or to go to a podcast. And you know, what I mean, they, they they didn't have those opportunities. They didn't have the opportunity to learn about business. Seriously, yeah, yeah. Seriously, they did not have that. You know, what I mean, they were working. My grandma told me she was working since she was like nine years old. Like it's just how it was. You know, you had to. Yeah, you had to. There was no, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because they didn't really release that information like that as it is now. Like, you can learn how to start an LLC and different things right. off the internet. You couldn't do that. So, whatever. So, I just feel like I owe it to my family that to do what they weren't able to do, 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like it. You also never have that problem. That's another reality. Yeah. Right? You'll never have that problem. Yeah. And so, that means you have a responsibility to do 100%. some cool stuff or at least try 100%. at a minimum, right? Some people don't. I have friends that, like I said, they come from wealthy families and they just don't try at all. And I'm like, bro, nothing's wrong with coming from, you know, a little bit of money. But I said, 
your dad busted his ass to get to where he, like he was like hustling and now you're chilling and sleeping in until like 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I have some friends like that from me. And it's funny because I tell them, I said, we're friends because of high school, right? We're friends because I've known you so long. Like if if I met you today, I wouldn't want to be around you because you're just you're slacking, bro. And I, and that's facts. There's t- you, you have friends like that too, where it's like I look at it different. So there's like it's like a cycle. So it's like tough tough times create tough people, yes. right? And then tough people create easy times. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people that made it, and they'll no matter what you tell them, no matter the fact that they know this, they just want to spoil their kids, and they don't care. They don't. They know the consequences. But their whole worldview is, I never want my kid to struggle. And like, as a parent, yeah, I'm not a parent, but I, I can understand why that happens. But in that, like to me, like my kids will never have that because my kids will always know that they're poor and I'm rich. And, <laughs> and they need to go do, yeah, Shaquille, like literally. <laughs> like my money. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Kevin Hart, all of them say this. And I'm like, I've been, I've been saying that shit forever. Like they'll never know Yeah, that it's. Like, I'll be like, you're on my vacation. And so, otherwise, go you go thing. from rags to riches to rags in the span of like two generations. That or, sucks, or, though. Yeah. But then, you know what? So, and, and this is a question for you guys, but then let's look at these like these rich families that have been rich for generations. How do these guys do that? Like, you know what I mean? Because I, I feel like, I do feel like, I feel like if I'm ma- rich if I, enough, if, your money just makes more money. But they, I, I feel like there's, well, they got those like, uh, was it? Your, all those trust and trust things funds. set up. Yeah. yeah. To where yeah. it's like, you have to meet certain metrics before you can access the money. It's like, you right. have to graduate from this school, this, like they have it all like pinpointed out to where you can't just be like yeah. ho- homeless, you know, in the family and just, you get your 10 million. You the, know? It all depends. The people that I know that have done it well, it's their high, their parents don't hide the struggle from them. And so, yeah, they might be in a $10 million home. Yeah. They might be on the red carpet. Yeah. They might be doing some really cool stuff, but they don't hide the struggle from their kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, this grind is fucking awful. The rejection I'm getting is ridiculous. And so when they win, they win big and they celebrate big. But when they're losing, they also communicate that to their kids. And I think if there's transparency there, the kids understand it. You know, and I think the people that are willing to share the struggle or the journey, that's what I'm going to do. That's, I feel like it's, it's so- also like sports. Like it plays a, a variety of things. It goes like the David Goggins thing, I think, is true in business, true in life. It's all about your mind. Your mind is your whole thing. And so if you can get a child to switch their mindset in like tennis or soccer or business or in school, that's, that's it. That's the secret. It's not, I'm not good at business because I'm good at business. I'm good at business because I understand failure and I love risk and I know how to, my mindset is there. That's what's required to be great. That's it. And so because I understand that, it makes that's sense. the game. And I think one of the people that's a good example is like Kobe Bryant, right? Kobe is not necessarily a rags of riches, you know what I mean? His dad, his right. dad had some bread, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he, yeah. his, that guy's work ethic was crazy, bro. Yeah. He, he was, was hungry. Out, he was outworking guys that did come from the, you know, the struggle like that, like that. I think it's in you too, man. I feel like you're kind of almost born with it, but it also takes a facilitation from your, your parental figures totally. as well. Yeah. Like I, I say to this to my wife all the time, I don't think our kids will have jobs. I think they're going to either, they're going to know how to invest in startups and why they're going to know how to do real estate development pro- projects and why. And like they're going to realize that their secret sauce is not either one of those things Their secret sauce is picking winners, knowing what horse to bet on and like being part of culture, betting on culture. Mm. And and if if I'm 50, I've lost touch with culture in some way. But if I'm 20. Right. My secret actually is the fact that I'm young and in the know and you can know what's going on. And that becomes their superpower. So it's not business and money. Their superpower Uh, becomes culture and and where it's going. So that's. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. And so that also, like, imagine, like, I'm 50, I'm saying that to you. That motivates the fuck out of you because it means, like, you have a superpower that I could never have because I yeah. can't go back. Yes, 100%. Right? Gary Vee always I, says that. And I think if, if you bet on culture, you win. And if you understand that, and there's several different forms. There's music, there's fashion, there's food. Yeah. Being in the vegan space is a real thing. And so you can create culture or just be on the winning ride. You got me motivated. I'm like, man, I'm going to make a call no, you right should. now. Look, I, look, I'll be honest I'm with you. I'm going to call the bank right now. I tell people all the time. So yesterday, like the other day, we were at this restaurant. We make friends with the person serving. Cool. See her at the, we open up a brewery. She's yeah. at the brewery. She's like, hey, I want to do a pop-up here. Cool. Two emails later, four days later, now she has a menu and she's doing a pop-up. And it's like that easy. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And she doesn't even, it's not her really full-time job. She's just like messing around in the culinary world. And seeing if people like it. So she's like where you were maybe years ago. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to see like what's going on. But she's already in the, a, a brewery. But that's the collaborative pop, yeah. nature of, of, of L.A. Mm. And so it's like it's easy. And as long as you have a good product, 
which the world has told you you do, then the hard part's over. Man, that's exciting. You you guys are super motivational. I love that, man. No, it's I, easy. I, I vibe off energy. But you're gonna easily. leave, and you're gonna be like, God damn, Diego told me I gotta do all this stuff, and I gotta do this stuff. I know, man. <laughs> it's all every time I go into like a business meeting with the right people. That's how it is. I come out with a checklist of things I'm, I'm not doing or things I need to improve on. Yeah, I love it though. But I also like I, you know, and in that, there's a moment of gratitude where it's like, but you're in that room for a reason. You're getting that advice for a reason. Exactly. And so just don't lose sight of the fact that. You know, you got a lot of happy problems ahead of you. One hundred percent. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to make it happen. You guys are stellar, man. I I, I just want to. I I see all the businesses you guys highlight, and it, it gets me motivated. Like the even some people in the vegan space, like all just everything you guys are doing, it's it's nothing like it. Like you know what I mean? For like you guys bringing on like um, you know smaller businesses, even bigger businesses, and like really collaborating people from the Ukraine, like yeah, all this crazy. That was crazy. I know. Super dope, man. Super dope. That shit. You'll never have that problem. Yeah. Oh, hopefully. shoot. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, oh man. God. What's what's the biggest who who do you think maybe came on and maybe has grown the most since you've interviewed? That's a really good question. Like grown themselves personally. Yeah, like may or like their business. Maybe or you bought business. on, you know, or a bore and then, you know That's a really good question. Maybe Therabody? Yeah. Ther- Theragun. Theragun. Therabody. Theragun? Theragun. Yeah. Really? You know that gun that like they, we had them the, on the Theragun at, Theragun. At like yeah. oh, wow. so we had that April of twenty twenty. And, that's a plug. and they were They're huge. Yeah. No, they, so that's the thing. So we got them right before they sponsored their first. A- no, they had just sponsored their first athlete, right. Colin Morocco, who's the tennis, a golfer. He was 18 out of UCLA or something. He, so he wins like three weeks after this interview. And now they have Cristiano Ronaldo. Right. They have all the F1 They're, they're teams. everywhere. And so from the moment we spoke to them, where they were just getting into like the professional athlete space to where they are today. Yeah. I mean, bananas. But like, if you ask in another year or two, could be a different answer. Could be you. Yeah, it could be, it's gonna be, be that you. guy. It's yeah. going to be. Keep this for the tape. I'm gonna, dude, Absolutely. We got to scale up. I that's mean, a, that's a good, that's a good, yeah. That's a good before and after. Right. You, got, you guys should uh, maybe, and I, I'm sorry for throwing ideas out, but <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it should be like a little segment where it's like, you know, what, what are you going to be doing where in two years from now? today? And yeah. you have the business person say it, and then maybe you can send them the clip. You what know are you doing mean? a year from now? Here exactly. A year from now. So small. We got you right here. A year from now, we'll have. At least two trucks in the restaurant going. I think that's a realistic Where? goal. So, man, I guess. Huh. Uh, L.A. L.A. I think L.A. But I want to keep one up home. I got to keep one up. Yeah, of course, no, for sure. You, got you, you have a business, yeah, got a business partner I got, up there. You know, and we got a, fa- a good yeah. fan base up there. But I want to get to L.A. I think we need. If we go to L.A., I think we can get like three and then keep one up there. All we right, should man. have like four things. May eighteenth, twenty twenty-three. We're we're checking oh, back in. Oh my goodness. Tell everyone where they can find you, where they can follow your journey. Okay, so you guys can follow us uh, on Instagram uh, at Las Marty's Food Truck, L A S M A R I S F O O D T R U C K. I had to test my spelling right there. Yeah. Food Truck uh, or LasMartysVegan.com. Same thing, L A S M A R I S V E G A N. Or you can follow me personally um, and just keep up with me, uh, Carlos Bryant 209. 209 is the area code of Stockton, California area. Uh, I wear that proudly. A lot of people are really ashamed of where we come from, and I, I wear that. I, I love it, man. I love it. People, some people know, but some people are like that. They're kind of uppity. They're like, oh, well, I, you know, I'm from, you know, I'm from Beverly Hills, but you're really from, like, Inglewood or something. You know what I mean? But they just, they're, no, seriously, <laughs> yeah. I know people like this. Yeah, for sure. You know people like right. that. Well, we're right. all like that in some way. Yeah, but it's like, I feel like you got to, I like being. Only like, where you came from. There's no harm in it. Some people just are ashamed. They want to be yeah. like, I love it. I feel like it makes my story even better because when you win, it's like, okay, this guy, yeah. right? This guy's not from you know Beverly Hills. This guy's yeah. from right. you know wherever he's from. That's so. what you can tell him. Do you know what I had to do to get out of the two? That's my new one. And into People this will room. never believe it. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. But no, I, I appreciate you guys so much, man. I don't yeah, know if thank you, Carlos. Any, Thanks for coming. Anything on the show. else from me or at all? Or? We're gonna check in a year from now. We're gonna yeah. do it again. Oh my goodness! I hope so. I hope I can be at the. You got the brewery, right? Yeah, you can yeah. be there whenever you want. We're gonna. We're gonna. <laughs> the food truck's gonna be there. I'm ready to go. LA, we're coming. Here we go. Thanks, Thanks, Carlos. I love it, man. Appreciate you guys so much, man. That was our conversation with Carlos of Las Maris. Recently, we started putting out a bi-monthly newsletter. It's our way of summarizing and highlighting certain moments in our podcast episodes that you may have missed, along with little tidbits of behind-the-scenes information about the recording or things that just didn't make it into the full episode. It's a great newsletter with a lot of thought that goes into it, so if you're a fan of the show, you'll be happy that you signed up for it. You can find the newsletter at our website, startupstorefront.com. 
We are found at Startup Storefront on every social media platform, except for Twitter, where we are found at STS Podcast LA. The team consists of Diego Torres Palma, Natalia Capellini, Lexi Jamison, Owen Capellini, and me, Nick Conrad. Our music is by Double Touch. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.